So everybody's doing something, right? Everybody, yeah. everybody has something, and 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 most of the time they've they've put a lot of thought into it, and they feel like they've got something that that works reasonably well. Yeah. Um, so so what do you say to folks who are who have taken the time to invest and in, and and been thoughtful and conscientious about the tool sets that they've built, but they also recognize, you know what? Maybe they've put a few too many coats of paint on that wall <laughs> at this point. And, uh, and, and maybe it's time to strip and, and get back down to the bare wood. I mean, what do you, what do you say to somebody who has, who's kind of facing something as dramatic as that? Yeah, it's, you know, it's a tough call because usually those layers of paint, I love the analogy, Doug. Um, they're, they're not only about the technology. It's not only about the tech, it's about the process and the people that happen too. So when you have multiple uh, technologies, you build up uh, multiple processes shared by multiple teams. And so to make a decision on a technology means literally affecting the personnel count in your organization. So it's a much bigger topic of, hey, this vendor um, isn't, isn't, you know, doesn't have the latest and greatest stuff anymore. Let's go with this vendor. We're doing, you know, proof of concept on it. I agree that, that vendors should, um, should step up. And I think with the with the you know the recent capabilities and composable architectures, the ability to drag and drop literally of a vendor technology into your stack with relatively um, uh, minor pain to get it working, um, we have to be prepared um, as as employees, as people, and and the process has to be flexible enough for that kind of change. Um, I see the pain happening when moving from a massive marketing stack to a decomposed stack. I also see it the other way around. Hey, we've got 25 tools. They work awesome. And Sally, Joe, and Rick, they've been here for 20 years. And that's why. But then Sally, Joe, and Rick retire. And nobody knows how to run this stuff. And so I see it going the other way. Then brands spend a lot of money on a massive stack. And they said, we can't do that anymore. That's not scalable. There's really no right or wrong answer to that. Um, you've got to take a look at your own organization and the culture that you've built around your data-driven practices and understand where your risks are. If you have too much technology, that's not necessarily a bad thing as long as there's no overlap. And so once we take stock of that, um, then we bring in the cost and say, is this feasible for the organization for the future? Should we keep spending? The case might be that you should be. Um, you know, I've seen a lot, of, a lot of clients who spend way too much money on their tech stack, but the revenues are much higher. So I don't want to give a one size fits all for that question. It'll depend. But typically the enterprises today, they're decomposing um, the, the intelligence of data from the actual um, uh, storage of that data. That's the first step. Have it live somewhere like a data cloud independently, technology nowadays, we can access that data in the data cloud without copying it into the other tools. That in and of itself um, will drive ROI and you can take it from there. The vendors that have warehouse native technology capabilities are gonna be the winners in the future. Yeah, again, um, we've seen a thing or two and, uh, and I'm old enough to remember um, when we first launched Solutions Review and how much resistance there was to moving to the cloud. Yeah. Um, and, and, and honestly, it, it felt like, um, you know, there was just, there was just way too much um, senior resistance for all the reasons why, you know, senior people became senior, right? They, yeah. they, they, they were making, again, conscientious decisions about their data. But as we've seen um, things evolve and technologies evolve and, and, uh, and the security around those technologies, you now have these incredible um, cloud data uh, solutions that um, where people are now, you know, happily leveraging, um, which leads to um, it's almost like uh, it's almost like there's there's a moment now with things moving so rapidly mm -hmm. um, that there's almost a paralysis uh, that can happen um, mm -hmm. where you see so much happening that you don't know. It's like I'll use another analogy. It's like getting onto a highway from a standing start. You know, it's that things yeah. are moving so fast. It's just, it feels dangerous to just yeah. jump in and try to go zero to 60 
um, without, uh, you know, causing a little bit of, uh, of risk. So how do you help people think about that? I mean, where should they be kind of thinking? Because they really do need to be thinking years downstream now um, as they start to organize against the new technology. And, and as we look at what's happening, five years from now is going to be a whole new world. I mean, how, do, how does Amplitude think about that yeah. um, as, a, as a risk that you need to mitigate? Well, I mean, I, Amplitude has a lot of plans in its roadmap for the coming years, and AI is a fundamental aspect of that. We believe that um, in the future, our, not only our product, many products will be self-healing, self-automating, self-managing. Um, that's easy to kind of predict. I mean, these are routine tasks that people do that can be codified. So to, to double down on a technology that promises to do that is, is akin to going from zero to 100 right off the bat because you haven't learned about your data. Um, I, I think the, the, the way to get off track is to buy into the message that all you have to do is automate data collection, make sure it's safe in a warehouse and away you go, start doing the same thing that you did before. Collect, enrich, activate. Three things, I believe there's four. I believe in between collect and enrichment, call a timeout and take the time to learn what you're gathering because it's changing. And that's not something the robots can do for you. Right. AI is not going to learn something new um, right off the bat. It needs evidence. Right. It's, there's going to be limitations to the large language models that are basing their recommendations off what they know. You have to teach this algorithm. And so the human part isn't going away. What's going away is the the manual processes that, that take so long to do, the, the haphazard political decisions that drive our decisions to throw out one technology and bring in another. Um, that's the stuff that's got to go away. And so when you start to build a data-driven culture, a true data-driven culture, you have to take the time with data. Take the part in marketing. We're now moving away from buying third-party data, giving it to Google and saying, oh, look at that. I got a 4.0 ROAS. That's better than the industry average. It's not good enough anymore, right? First-party data strategies, they start off very, very small, uh, the tranche of data. And we're used to having all this reach because we bought, you know, 50,000 bucks worth of data from Google. Well, no longer. Now we only have this much. So the precision, on the other hand, of first party data is 100 percent. We know exactly who we're dealing with. We've actually run tests on them. But our reach uh, normally is, is very low. Give it time. That first party data tranche will grow and grow as you hit your metrics in your North Star strategy and you reduce churn and you increase acquisition at a lower cost per lead. That'll grow and then get ready to share. With some of these data clean rooms and these retail media networks that are snapped uh, attached to them, you're gonna find that you have like brands and partnership opportunities to add to your first party data tranche with new insights off your brand, off your strategy. You're gonna learn from Hulu and Disney and Best Buy and you know Alaska Airlines. They'll teach you something about your consumer that you never knew and it will be consented, compliant data. And so have faith in that and get ready to invest some time in that and you will benefit um, from that spend. Uh, Ted, this has been uh, very helpful for me and, uh, and a great presentation. Thanks very much for the time today and best of luck for the rest of the year. Thank you so much, Doug, and thanks for having me and thank you to the audience uh, for, for attending. It's been my pleasure. If your business would like to be featured in a future event, contact us today.